for for Noko HQ. What we're gonna take a look at today will be building collapsible menus, quite an important thing. Um, also for offering a great user experience and also sometimes you just don't have the space in Bubble and you want to build collapsible menus, coll collapsible groups, um, uh, just to yeah have, a, have more uh, items in a specific uh, space, I would say, uh, and just increase the user experience. And I'm going to show you two examples of this, okay? Um, we're going to build one custom group with collapsible um, elements. And then we're also going to build an example with a focus group. But let's just jump right into it. So I'm just going to start off by um, selecting or searching for a group um, and just dragging this um, on here. All right. Um, let's just center this and let's just call this, I don't know, um, collapsible group. OK, let's also maybe define that a bit. I'm still here on the old uh, responsive engine. Um, let's maybe say, okay, this should have a max, max width. Let's add the border style, um, slightly grayish like this and make this round. Okay. All right. So this is our menu. And let's say we have, um, in this menu, we have different items. So we have item number one, which is the text. Okay. And then we're going to include, um, let's just call it item one. Okay. Um, and what you can also do is, uh, if you don't know that already, you can always add um, custom icons um, by using notation here. Um, so always square brackets open, write FA, then the name of the icon, and then close these brackets. How do you know the name of the icon? Well, you can either go to fontawesome.com or what I like to do, I just like to drag this icon uh, um, element here on the page. And then you can search for all those icons. So I'm going to search for arrow down um like this i'm just going to copy this this we want to copy the part after after fa which is fa arrow down so the, the second fa like this i'm just going to paste that here in the middle and you will see the icon is displayed in line with the text so that's also a great way instead of pushing them here together and then aligning them etc etc okay Great. So this is our first um, yeah, item point. And beneath this, I want to add a group and this will be our actual collapsible group. Okay. Let's drag that directly under it. Okay. And that, then what I want to do, I want to add some text here. It really doesn't matter what you want to add here, but let's just say this is a FAQ. I'm just going to add lorem ipsum like this, but we're going to actually make it a bit longer. Okay, let's rename the parent group, not group B, um, item one. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy this whole thing and have another item. Let's just actually make this smaller. This is item two. And for item two, we're also going to have a group. Um, let's copy the group. Okay, and here, I don't know, let's have the same thing, but in bold. So, um, Let's now take a look at this, okay? So what we have here is we have a text, okay, which is item one. This is um, just a normal text that's display visible on page load. Beneath this, we have um, a group, okay, called item one. And within this group, we have this long text. You can already see, um, well, this text won't fit into this, in this uh, single group here. It will push it down, so the text will be displayed like this. OK, and this won't be a problem because our group here will automatically um, adjust to the height of this. But we don't want this to always be displayed. We want this to be collapsible when this is clicked. So how are we going to do this? Well, quite simple. I'm going to choose the group, which is item one. And I'm going to say this is not visible on page load. OK, and I want to collapse this element's height when hidden. And this is really important. This is the main um, yeah, function you have to um, keep in mind. Uh, if we enable that, then when this item or this group is hidden, the height will be collapsed and it won't be accounted for. Okay, because what would otherwise happen is if that once this text is visible and then you hide it again, Bubble will still leave this text open. If you understand what I mean, how about if we, if we collapse this element's height when it's hidden, then this will jump up again. Okay, let me just quickly show you what I mean. Okay, so we're also going to make this here. Um, let's call this item two also not visible on page though. And then we're going to add a simple workflow here. So when item one is pressed, we want to show um, item one. OK, 
Okay, let's quickly preview that just to, to show you what I mean. Okay, I forgot to add, remove the icon here, but it doesn't matter. So you can see we have item one, item two, our small group here. I'm gonna press this now. And you see our group is displayed, okay? And the whole group is pushed down, okay? Now what I forgot to add is closing this to show the col collapsing animation. So let's build that in as well. Um, so there would be different ways to, to do this. Um, one way is using custom states, okay? So I can add a custom state here to this text and call, uh, call it opened, okay? Opened, yes or no? Uh, yes or no? Let's say the default state is no, okay? And then we want to say, all right, when this is pressed, not show item, but we want to set the state of this text opened to yes, okay? And then we're going to actually add a conditional. We're going to say, all right, when this text oops, uh, opened is yes, well, then should not be visible because then I'm just going to copy this text. Okay, let's call this text one opened. Place that directly above. And we're going to uh, apply the opposite, basically. We're going to say when the text, when our group is open, this should be visible and should not be visible on page load. And then obviously we're going to use an arrow up, um, arrow up icon. Okay. You're probably a bit confused now uh, of what I did here, but let me just first preview it. And then I'm going to explain to you um, uh, what I did here, what happened. So let's take a look at that. And one more thing we have to add here actually is um, we have to add um, conditionals to this group. Now, instead of showing hiding it via workflows, we're going to simply have when this text uh, opened is yes. All right. Uh, well, then this is visible. Okay. And also we have to add a uh, action here to the opened text. So when this is pressed, we want to set the state of our text opened to no. Okay. So let's try that now. See if it works. So let's click on item one. You see, as before, this opens and something is hidden. So let's see what the error is. Okay. Um, our item one opened. Is not visible this when this text is not this text when the other text is opened. Let's just change that. Now it should work. And um, I'm going to click the item one. Okay, this opens. You can see already our arrow is now up. I'm going to click this again and it closes. And if what you see is this group automatically adjusts in terms of height. Okay, so we created this collapsible piece of information that when you allow it to be visible is visible increases the height of the group but then if you close it again this disappears and the height of the group adjusts again okay so let me just quickly run through what i did here um i have these let's just have this okay so i have the standard text here which is item one and has this arrow down okay this will be visible on page load okay this has a custom state okay of which is called open question mark and the default value is no because on page load our item should not be opened, okay? And then we're gonna have a, a workflow. We're gonna say when this is pressed, so when the user wants to open this item, well, then we set the state opened to yes, because it should be opened, okay? Then we have a simple um, simple um, conditional on this group, which is the actual item, which is not visible on page load. We're gonna say, so when the, the state is opened, this should be visible. And when it's not opened, well, the default uh, visibility is no. All right. And then obviously we need to have um, a conditional on this item here and say, well, when the text, uh, when, when the item is opened, this should be on the other hand, not be visible because this is the arrow down text. Okay. What should be visible if the item is open should be our arrow up text, which you can see right now because it's overlapping. But this as you can see when opened is yes, this should be visible but it should not be visible on page load. And then on the opposite side, when our arrow, um, when our arrow up, up item is pressed, okay, then we wanna set the states of open to no. Okay, so kind of a bit uh, um, a mix around with states um, and different items and conditionals, but um, um, once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite a simple way of solving this and having this nice, um, yeah, and, and easy uh, functionality of showing collapse in menus. Great. So the second um, kind of collapsible menu I want to show you is with focus groups. And it's also quite simple as well. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have a group here. Okay. 
uh, same as before i'm just going to center that here apply maximum width um, and then have a border uh, style okay solid like this so let's just i don't know have a text here and this text should say click me like this great and then what i want to have i want to have a focus group which plops under this when this is pressed so how are we going to do this so let's search for focus group or group focus just drag that here and then you will have to define the reference element in this case our group is called group d so let's define that so group d is the reference element okay we want to have the width exactly the same so the width of this is 541 so let's have here 541 okay you can see that's perfectly aligned okay we don't want any background color and we want the same border style okay so let's have a border style copy this here all right um and now actually what i want to do is a bit of a styling thing but i want to define each border independently because i want this once this focus group is visible to this border to disappear and this to be one single group so i'm going to show you how i'm going to make this i'm going to define each border independently we want to have a right border okay here we want to have a bottom border here and we want to have a left border here okay then we have to add the uh, rounding as well bottom right what was it uh, 210 yeah so bottom right is 10 and bottom left is 10 as well okay all right so it looks already quite good okay now one last thing or actually let's make this a bit high, higher and let's also add just text here just to show you that this would be then the, the actual content of this group okay so now let's add a conditional okay because you can see this doesn't look nice ui wise what i'm trying to build here is that obviously this focus group won't be visible on page low and then we have this closed border button but then if we click this, we want this to be open and kind of to fuse with the borders here just for a better UI. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to add a conditional. I want to say when our focus group is visible. So one thing I'm going to do as well here, I'm going to change this to define each border independently as well. So let's just quickly add that here. We have 10. Then we have our color. Let me just copy that. This is just a lot of manual um, style work. Um, but that's unfortunately what you have to do. So solid, 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 like this, like this, like this, 10 and 10 and 10. So why am I doing this? Because now under the conditional, when group focus A is visible, we can now define each uh, border uh, uh, side individually when our focus group is visible. And what do we want to change? Well, we want to remove this bottom border. All right we don't want to have a bottom border okay i hope that makes sense and then we want to change the border brown roundness on the bottom left here we want to remove the roundness and on the bottom right as well okay and then last but not least we want to have a workflow so when this group d is pressed i want to show my focus group okay so before i'm going to preview this let me just run through this again this is the default button group, whatever you want to call it. It says click me. Okay. It's visible on page load and it's a fully uh, closed button with borders. When this is pressed, we have a workflow, which then shows this focus group, which will be uh, attached uh, underneath it. This focus group contains information, text, data, uh, buttons, whatever. This focus group does not have a top border, as you can see. And it has no radius uh, or rounded edges on the top right and top left. So we have a conditional on this group, which says when our focus group is visible, we also want to remove our bottom border and remove the roundness. What effect will that have? Well, it will have the effect, which we will see in a second, is that when the focus group is visible, these will kind of be fused and will look like one group. And we use that a lot in our applications just because it's a really smooth way um, of having collapsible menu so let's actually uh, preview that now and see what happens 
Let's try that. You can see it's a closed button here. Click me. Perfect. You can see we have this. Um, this actually looks like one group now, whereas it isn't. We have our top group here and we have our focus group beneath this, but they're fused uh, using the border rules we defined. If I now just click somewhere else on the page, and that's the beauty of focus groups, this whole thing collapses again. So this is only opened when you click on it. Uh, it stays open until you click somewhere else. So you can see a really nice, nice way of having collapsible menus. Um, two methods we showed you here, one with states and um, hiding showing groups and one using focus groups. Both work really fine and uh, as I said are a great way of just um, um, yeah, having a, a high density of uh, information on a single page. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NokeHQ. Bye.